And we would do stupid things in front of our kids where we all of a sudden we'd have this, wow, and then our children would be like, wow. They would be sitting there at the dinner table like that. Yeah. We just saw something we, we didn't want to be part of. And John and I would excuse ourselves, make it right, and come back and tell the children what we had done to resolve the conflict. Because if we have a conflict in front of our children, we have to give them tools to resolve it. And one part of resolution that I think is very important is it's one thing to say, I'm sorry, right? Because you're sorry that the thing escalated and you're sorry that everyone got mad and you're sorry that it broke relationship and that you overreacted. But what you're talking about is you're sorry for the symptoms of the conflict, um, but you don't really understand what you did that was hurtful in the first place. So I found for years, like Gabe or I would just go, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm tired. You know, it's like, okay, maybe you did, maybe you're hangry, whatever. But but if this is happening a lot, there's something more than the fact that you're tired and you just want to move on and you're sorry that we fought, right? I just hate the fighting. Well, it's like no one loves fighting, but they keep fighting. And so part of it, I think, was coming back around to going, why am I sorry? What am I sorry for exactly? Did I That's did good. I overstep? Was I disrespectful? Do I do I have real issues with the way you see something and I'm really selfish about that? You know, like it's getting below that I'm sorry that we had a fight and let's stop yeah. fighting. It's what did I do that actually was very hurtful to you? And what did I receive yeah. that felt hurtful from you? And like, let's go to that place of reconciliation so we can, again, yeah. know each other a little bit better and understand like, oh, that's a vulnerability for you. Because historically, when you hear these things, it takes you there or it might do the same for me. That has been so life-changing for us these last couple of years as we understand that it's not just, I'm sorry we had the conflict, but sorry for the way in which I didn't see or understand where you were really coming from. Yeah. And I think yeah, that goes that back to a, a woman being the guardian of her husband's heart to say, okay, I, I'm going to be that safe place for you to deposit your heart. And I'm going to ask some questions because I don't understand why you're even having this reaction right now. So I want to find out how I can actually be a guardian yeah. of your heart in this situation. But we definitely had a different dynamic. And one of the things that we had to learn was to respect one another. And I think right now we don't understand honor and respect. On the way over here, we do a staff prayer meeting Monday through through Friday. And one of our core values of Messenger International is honor. Because we believe that when you honor God and you honor each other, and even, you know, you honor those under your care, when you honor, you actually get a portion of the reward that's on their life. So when I honor my husband, I actually get a little bit of what is on his life. And so many people are seeking to be honored rather than finding ways to honor others. And you think about how Jesus, he, do, he doesn't, even how he washes his bride, he says he washes her with the water of the word yeah. and he evokes her beauty. So when Jesus yeah. loves me, he loves me to bring out the best in me, to evoke my beauty, to wash off shame. He washes me with the water of the word. He doesn't remind me of my past. He actually washes me in a way that provokes my destiny, that provokes my strengths. And I think too many women are like, I'll respect my husband when he acts respectful. Well, the truth is when you're in a covenant with somebody, you need to respect their position, even if you don't respect their behavior. And so I think a lot of times, even with children, we would tell our boys, if you respect us, even if we're stupid parents, even if you think we should get a phone at 12 and we said, no, you can't, even if you think we're making horrible decisions, God says, if you yeah. will honor your parents, it's going to go well with you, yeah. not well with us, well right. with you. Yeah. This is the first commandment with a promise. And all I know is I love that story of the, the crazy, crazy husband, Nabal. He's crazy, but Abigail somehow understands that she has a portion to bring and she honors, she honors David to so the man he one day would be. And she doesn't dishonor him in front of all the other men. So she says, let me whisper in your ear. And so I think a lot of times as women, we get so busy yelling 
that we forget the power of coming close and whispering in their ear. And sometimes I've found out in arguments with John and I, and, and again, we we probably need to have a good one. We haven't had one for a long time. But um, <laughs> but when we have an argument, sometimes sometimes I'll just come close and he knows what I'm going to do. And I just put my arms around him. Because there comes a moment where you've said too much and, and enough has been said and you just need to get close with each other and whisper in one another's ear. And it isn't a canceling of this conflict that we're not going to ever have it. And again, you know, Deborah and I were talking in the makeup room, you know, John and I, again, passionate, strong, opinionated people. I mean, there's just nothing we feel neutral about. And and we would do stupid things in front of our kids where we all of a sudden we'd have this, wow, and then our children would be like, wow. They would be sitting there at the dinner table like that. Yeah. We just saw something we we didn't want to be part of. And John and I would excuse ourselves, make it right, and come back and tell the children what we had done to resolve the conflict. Because if we have a conflict in front of our children, we have to give them tools to resolve it. It's true. Yeah, that's so I like what you were saying, Lisa, and I think it's such a good reminder, you know, when you were saying how you just put your arms around John, we've got to remember that conflict is an invitation to deeper intimacy with our spouse. I think we're wired, some of us, especially coming from families who are conflict avoiders or yeah. families like yours, Lisa, where everyone just wants to fight. You're wired to see conflict as a bad thing. But it's not a bad thing. It's an invitation. What makes it bad is how we handle it, if we handle it in a healthy yeah. way or an unhealthy way. But when we can look at this argument, okay, we're struggling with something, God is offering us an invitation to go deeper, Come to on. love each other, to communicate better, to forgive, to give, to, to interact in a healthy way that's going to eventually make our marriage better. I think when we can view it as an invitation— you see it yeah. a little bit differently. And and I've thing. also tried to learn to see my husband, not just who he is in the past 24 hours, because the past 24 hours may not yes. have been that great, but learn to see him through the long haul of who he has been to me through a lifetime of marriage, yeah. through, through the 15 Beautiful. years that we've been married and the two years that Come we on. dated before that to see him as a whole, not just as this tiny cross-section of the past 24 hours, helps to, to give me grace and respect when I sometimes struggle with that. You know, I just feel like this week we have been tackling some things, but we've been giving you tools. I mean, I've been taking notes, and some of you are out there, and, and you're just wondering. You're saying, I feel like my marriage is just in a crisis, that it is in constant conflict. Well, you know, the Bible says that iron can sharpen iron. And when iron sharpens iron, sometimes there's a little bit of sparks. And maybe you're in a season where you just think there is crisis and conflict. But I'm telling you, if you turn to God, He will take the crisis and conflict, and He will actually use it as a catalyst to actually remake you. When you have this open conversation to your father and say, what is it in me that is overreacting to that? You know, he wants to answer you. And so I'm gonna pray right now, just as I talked about coming close to my husband and whispering in his ear that the Holy Spirit would draw near to you and whisper into your ear, this a solution. So Heavenly Father, I thank you that you want us to have marriages where two become one, not same, but one, that we could walk in unity, that people would know us because our love one for another. And Father, I just thank you that you are in the process of transforming our marriages, transforming what marriage looks like, that you are redisplaying what a covenant looks like. And I thank you, Father, that you care. You care about the desires of the wife and you care about the desires of the husband. And Father, we don't need to see each other as enemies, but allies in Jesus' name. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.